Welcome to the second in this three-part series looking at securing a market for your drug beyond patent protection. I'm Ian Jones, the UK and European patent attorney and senior associate at Gill Jennings & Every, a European intellectual property firm focusing on patents, trademarks and designs. In the first session, we saw how SPCs can be used to increase the duration of market exclusivity for a marketable drug in Europe. In this session, we're going to explore the practicalities of obtaining an SPC, the impact of Brexit and the SPC manufacturing waiver. So what do you need to apply for an SPC? Well, you must have a granted patent in the country of interest. This can be via the European Patent Office or directly at a national patent office. It must protect the product and be in force, that is not expired or lapsed. You must also have a granted first marketing authorization for the product in that country. This can be a national marketing authorization issued by the relevant regulatory body in that country, or it can be a centralized marketing authorization such as one issued by the European Medicines Agency, the EMA. Marketing authorizations issued by the EMA currently cover all EU countries and Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein. They do not cover Switzerland, neither do they cover Great Britain following Brexit, and technically not Northern Ireland either. However, the situation there is more complex. In the first session, we've learned that in SBC terms, the product must be a new active ingredient. It is therefore crucial that the authorization is the first authorization to place that product on the market in the particular country. If there is an earlier marketing authorization for that product, i.e. The, the active ingredient in the territory, then the SPC will be refused, or if it's already granted, it will be found invalid. It's possible to base more, more than one SPC off the same pattern. However, again, the SPC must be for a different product, an active ingredient. SPCs are national rights and not pan-EU rights. SPCs are not granted by the European Patent Office or the European Union in its Intellectual Property Office. Instead, they are national rights and must be applied for separately in each country of interest. This is despite SPC law being largely harmonised throughout Europe. It also means that there's no central European means for third parties to invalidate an SPC, unless the base European patent is revoked by the EPO. SPCs can only be challenged in each individual country, which potentially leads to differences in interpretation of validity in different countries. Importantly, the SPC must be applied for within six months of the later of the grant of the patent or the grant of the marketing authorization. This means it's extremely important for those dealing with the IP of your company and your regulatory department to keep each other informed of progress. It is also important to note that the grant of the marketing authorization is not necessarily considered to be the date on which the marketing authorization was approved, but instead the date on which the applicant is notified of the approval. This could be several days later and may impact not only on the duration of the SPC, but also the deadline for filing it. The applicant for an SPC must be the same as the owner of the basic patent. An exclusive licensee who has been given full control of the basic patent and who may have been responsible for its grant and the payment of renewal fees, must ask the patentee to apply for the SPC. For this reason, it's also very important to ensure that any transfer of rights in the basic patent have been recorded at each relevant country before an SPC application is filed. Interestingly though, the marketing authorization referred to in the SPC application does not need to be in the same name as the patentee. In fact, it's highly likely that it will not be the same as pharmaceutical developers often have complex group structures or patent rights tend to be licensed. In the case that it is different, I highly recommend that a brief explanation of any economic connection between the patent owner and the market authorization holder is included in the SPC application, although no proof is needed. This is because there's currently an unresolved issue for SPCs in which an SPC may be applied for by a patent owner citing a marketing authorization held by a company that has not authorized its use in the SPC application. This is commonly referred to as a third party SPC or SPC squatting. The upshot of this is the market authorization holder may need to seek a license from the SPC holder to market the medicine. 
There's an assumption that such SPCs are valid until a court has decided on this matter, which has not yet happened. There was a case that came close between Genentech and Eli Lilly in the UK. The question of whether the SPC squatting is allowable was referred to the Court of Justice of the European Union, the CJEU, which, at that time, was the highest court that could hear UK SPC cases. However, the CJEU refused to hear the case as it was open to appeal in the UK, at which point Brexit happened and so, on, and so now the UK courts can no longer refer cases to the CJEU. So SPC squatting is certainly something to look out for when you obtain your own marketing authorizations, as it may prevent you from marketing your own drug. So what do we need to include in an SPC application? Well, there's typically a form to fill out, which sets out the applicant details together with that, those of the basic patterns and the marketing authorization relied upon. You also need to identify the product to be, to be protected by the SPC. This is extremely important because incorrectly defining the product in the application may not be correctable at a later date, and you could lose the opportunity to obtain SPC protection. You should also include a copy of the marketing authorization and the decision to grant it. And I always include a covering letter essentially discussing any additional case specific details, such as explaining the difference between the grant date of the marketing authorization and the notification date, and any difference between or any link between the patent owner and the marketing authorization holder. Now, as mentioned, SPCs need to be filed at national patent offices as they are individual rights. You will need, therefore need representation in each country. Now, we work with a network of attorneys across Europe who specialize in SPCs to ensure this is done correctly on your behalf. So what's the SPC examination process like? Well, it's more, it's more of a formal examination than an in-depth examination that you would expect to see for a patent. The National Patent Office would check the SPC application meets the basic legal requirements and that all the documents are in order. Occasionally, there may be a bit of back and forth with the examiner, usually around the product name, particularly if the acting ingredient in the product is not identical to that written literally in the claims of a patent. Once the examiner is happy and an SBC is granted, it will then lay dormant until the basic patent expires, at which point it comes to life, provided that renewal fees are paid in time. Now, following Brexit, EU law no longer applies to the UK. Patent law remained largely unchanged as the, EP, as the European Patent Office sits outside the remit of the EU. However, leaving the EU has had an impact on SPCs, and it's important to know about these differences. Marketing authorizations issued by the European Medicines Agency, the EMA, now no longer cover the UK. So on the 1st of January 2021, Authorizations from the EMA were automatically converted into national, into national equivalents at the Medicines and Healthcare Products Reg Regulatory Agency, the MHRA. In addition, under the UK's EU Withdrawal Act, the UK incorporated all EU SPC law into UK national law. Subsequent applications were needed to enable the law to function in its UK context. In particular, changes were necessary in view of the movement of goods between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, which is governed by the Northern Ireland Protocol, and was a key issue in discussions for Brexit. Those changes include the UK being able to issue marketing authorizations covering the whole of the UK, Great Britain, so that's England, Scotland and Wales, or just Northern Ireland. This was needed because the Northern Ireland Protocol contains provisions to avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. These include many of the requirements which apply when placing goods on the market in Northern Ireland, including medicines. As a result, EU legislation on regulate, regulating medicines and pesticides will continue to apply in the Republic of Ireland as it stood in the EU and will also continue to apply to Northern Ireland due to the Northern Ireland Protocol. This means that marketing authorizations granted by the EMA will still apply to Northern Ireland, despite it not applying to the rest of the UK. Hence, there was a need for the UK to be able to issue separate UK, GB and Northern Ireland marketing authorizations. 
Now, an SPC must be filed within six months of the later of the grant of the basic patent or grant of the marketing authorization. However, you can now have a UK GB or Northern Ireland marketing authorization. So which starts the clock? Well, at the moment, it's the first of those three to be granted. You, can then, you then have the option to add the other marketing authorizations to the SPC applications within six months of them being granted, and as long as the SPC application is not yet in force. That is, the basic patent must not yet have expired. So a GB marketing authorization could grant first starting the clock to file an SPC application. You can then add the Northern Ireland marketing authorization when granted to extend SPC protection to Northern Ireland as well as, G, as well as Great Britain. In addition, if you have any authorizations granted in the European Economic Area, the EEA, which predate the earliest of your UK, GB or Northern Ireland authorizations, you will need to provide details of the earliest of such authorization in the application. These details are needed to determine the duration of your SPC. So the patent system seemed to get through Brexit relatively unscathed. However, Brexit really has complicated the SPC issue. I just want to touch on paediatric extension requests. Post-Brexit, these are similar to before. You need to make the request no later than two years before your SPC is due to expire. You need to provide a copy of a statement in your authorization approving the outcome of a paediatric investigation plan, the PIP. And you need to include information on the territory in which the authorization covers. One positive outcome from Brexit is that you know, now no longer need to provide evidence of marketing authorization in the member states of the EU, at least not for extension requests filed since the 1st of January 2021. If your SPC is based upon a GB and separate Northern Ireland marketing authorization, then only one paediatric extension request needs to be filed, although you can request them separately. Also, paediatric extensions can only extend an existing SPC. So if you make the request while the SPC is in force, the paediatric extension will only apply to the ter territory where the SPC already provides protection. Likewise, if the paediatric extension only applies to the part of the SPC territory, such as just to, the, to the Great Britain, then the SPC would only be extended in that territory, even if the SPC enforced or that also covers Northern Ireland. Now, if someone's infringing your SPC, the action that you would need to take is the same as that of someone infringing the original patent. In the UK, this would typically be in the civil courts, although technically it can be before the UK IPO. However, the inevitable costs involved in litigating marketable pharmaceuticals means it's usually much better placed in the court system. So let's look at SPCs from the other side. The patent system provides market exclusivity for patentees and the SPC system compensates the patentee for the delay in receiving a, an authorization to market a drug. But once an SPC expires, third parties should be allowed to sell their product on the market. But SPCs are only available in Europe. So are European gener generics companies disadvantaged on the international stage? The two problems that are faced by European-based generics companies, the first is that they cannot produce a drug protected by an SPC, even if it's to be exported to a country where no SPC protection is available, such as exporting it outside of Europe. Second problem is that an SPC would prevent the company from being able to stockpile the product, a protected drug, so, that it was, so they could release it on the European market as soon as the SPC expired. Now, any such production or stockpiling, either for export or for release as soon as the SPC expired, would be considered an infringement of the SPC. Contrast this with a generic company based outside of Europe, where there's no SPC protection. Not only would that company be able to sell the generic drug in its own country without Euro European competitors, but that company would also be able to stop other drug for sale in Europe once the SPC expires, assuming there's no patent term extension in that country. Now, this certainly sounds like something the EU, EU would try to avoid. They want European generics companies to be ready to launch as soon as the SPC expires. So the EU introduced the SPC manufacturing waiver. The waiver means that at any time during the term of an SPC, 
the manufacturer of a product in the EU will not infringe an SPC if that product is for export outside the EU. So that fixed the first of the EU problems. Also, in the last six months of an SPC term, the manufacture and associated storage of a product intended for the EU market will not infringe, will not infringe the SPC. Now this dealt with the second of the EU's problems. In addition, it's important to note that the waiver only permits the stockpiling of products which has been manufactured in the EU. It does not allow stockpiling of products manufactured outside the EU. So this benefits just the EU generics companies. To make use of the SPC waiver, you simply just need to notify the UK Intellectual Property Office that you intend to do so with it no later than three months before starting. So that's a summary of SPCs in Europe. In the third and final session, we will look at data and marketing exclusivity and also orphan designations.